What's happening, people? Welcome back to Out of the Loop. So uh, I've completed my road to Injuna Deep, which was a series that I started, a video series that I started uh, a year ago. I only made two videos um, as I was trying to just make videos when I reached a certain milestone. And I honestly thought that this milestone would be in maybe uh, yeah five or six videos, like five years time from when I started. Um, and it took me a lot less time, which is amazing. And um, to be honest, I'm not even sure how this has even happened. But uh, yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon. So I just wanted to, to, to celebrate this news with you guys and then try and go over some of the things that I've done in, in this time to achieve what I have achieved to try and break it down and understand um, understand it myself. <laughs> so yeah, this is like a part of the contract. Obviously, I can't show like the full details of this contract or get in big trouble. But yeah, this is what I've been working towards for, yeah, I don't know how long I've been producing now. I guess I've been making electronic music for um, since maybe 2018, like the year before Corona. Yeah, maybe 2018. So four years I've been making electronic music. And I guess, yeah, a year ago or a year and a half ago, I set out to try and get signed to Enduna Deep. And uh, yeah, now here I am. So yeah, this was uh, the start back in February 2021. Looked pretty different back then, if I have a little look. <laughs> this was in a, I had a different apartment back then. I was, uh, yeah, in this little small, small apartment with no studio or anything like that. I was just moving out. You can see all this moving stuff uh, behind me. And then I moved into where I am now, which is where I actually have a studio, which has helped me a lot. So, yeah, from this point, I had made a plan to to yeah to to try and get signed to certain labels i think and uh, what labels i'm going to get signed to and how that's going to align me with the label that i want to get to in the end and it's really important to do this if you guys are hoping to try and do the same thing if you want to get signed to a big label um, or whatever you want to do is you know try and lay out the stepping stones that you need to step on to get to that point uh, which is something that i did and it, and it, and it worked um, so yeah, uh, the proof is in the pudding. So yeah, what I, I plan to do at this point, um, I, and at this point I actually had a different name. I was going under the name of Matt Black and I was making melodic techno and stuff like that. And uh, I knew that I wanted to make a little bit more kind of like emotional music, uh, a bit more melodic and basically like melodic house, progressive house, melodic breaks and stuff like that. And at that point, I think I just got a signing to Monster Cat Silk uh, which was not really like the music that I was making previously. So I decided to change my name to La. And then I released that song, Flawed, uh, in, yeah, I think like June or July of 2021. And that was the start of this journey, essentially, towards Injuna Deep. Um, and then, yeah, I released several other tracks since then. So, yeah, from that point, uh, I have I've released 11, no, eight tracks uh, sorry 11 tracks but like eight releases and one actually just came out today go check it out it's called gaze uh this one here and so yeah i my whole idea was just to yeah try and get recognized more and more by people within the genre so like build up some credibility within the genre obviously hoping to do good numbers on spotify and apple music and all that stuff and i've done okay like in, in that regard i've not hit huge numbers the biggest success that i've had in that time i guess is we've used uh, this track that came out on monster cat silk in october it's hit around eighty-five thousand streams and it's uh, regularly on like the Discover Weekly and the radio uh, playlist for Spotify. So it's been doing good. And it also got on, it hit 600,000 plays on Apple Music. Unfortunately, no one cares about Apple Music, uh, but it, it was actually like a really huge achievement for me. Got onto the biggest playlist on there on Apple Music. Uh, but yeah, nobody really looks at that for, for some reason. Um, but yeah, so there's been some small successes in that time, but in all honesty, I don't think that is what has attributed, attributed towards my success or like or to, towards this small success of me getting signed to in Juno Deep. But I'm going to try and break down what has, has helped and, and contributed towards the improvement of my music production. I'm actually going to show you uh, a track that is being signed by them. I might get in trouble for doing this and I'll probably have to take this video down when the track comes out. 
um, but it'll probably come out in like a year's time so there'll be a year for you guys to watch this video um, and yeah sorry I don't know if I mentioned this at the start but I've signed four tracks to Enjuna Deep originally it was three tracks and then they messaged me this week saying can we have this additional track which I was absolutely buzzing about um, so yeah I'm going to be signing four tracks to them which are going to probably come out uh, next year I'm not sure when I don't have a release date yet so um, yeah I guess ways that I have improved my production that I can notice myself is simplifying things a lot more and and kind of like making a decision to not sound like anybody else not on purpose in a way like I well no I guess on purpose like when I start my projects I don't reference anybody sometimes I will reference if I'm like oh, I really like um, the drum pattern of this or something like that and I will maybe reference for that reason but like decisions on creativity and things like that I really try to put the blinders on and not listen to many of much of a music within the genre and just like do whatever just feels fun at the time and like, every track is just always about just like oh, exploring music production and seeing what I can do new each time every track is always different I, I tend to not have that many tracks that sound very much the same and it's not like something I'm doing on purpose it's just something that I'm doing by always trying to do something better and new each time on each track the other thing I think helps a lot is I have a, like a very high work ethic. Uh, maybe not these days, I'm getting a bit sloppy, but I had a very high work, work ethic over the last four years with music production, um, and which has not been the most healthy thing to do. I have spent like sometimes eight hours, 12 hours a day in the studio just making lots and lots of music um, and tried to make like two or three tracks every, every single week, like completely finished tracks two or three times a week. And um, yeah, I think it's helped a lot. And one thing like, I want you to, to look at is, so see that I've, I've released um, 11 tracks in a year, or around a year, something like that. And I would say in that time, I've probably made around 300 tracks, <laughs> probably more than that. Um, I've made a lot of music and not like always full tracks, but like just ideas and things like that. And this is something that you, is really good to get used to doing, like just making something that you're like, all right, it's pretty good, but I can come back to it. Or, uh, yeah, this is a nice idea, but it's not the one. Just get rid of it or whatever. Uh, but you'll get times when you'll start something and it will just be in the first half an hour or sometimes like the first hour or whatever. And you'll be like, yes, this is the one. Like this, this has that thing, that something. And then, you know, they're the things that you're trying to push towards. And it's worth just still pursuing a track that you think might not be amazing. It's still worth doing that. Don't just give up after a few minutes or whatever. Uh, like still pursue something, even if you think it's not special, because you're going to learn something. You're going to learn how to make that OK track better because, you know, you're not going to want to just listen to some shit track for the next few hours. So but yeah, I would say that just get used to moving on to the next one. Don't be so caught up in your project that you've spent hours and hours and hours on or days and days on just be like all right it's, it's probably not the one i'm not listening to it all the time i'm not like really rushing to show it to people or send it to labels uh just move on cool uh, i think i'm rambling a little bit so uh yeah i'm gonna dive into this track here um so yeah what i want to say just like with the four tracks that are, are being signed to engineer they're all really weird like well they're all not weird but they're like not what you would hear in in the genre they're uh, they they're very unique they stand out i think um they yeah they they're going to be hard to compare with another artist within melodic house i think and this is something that i like i said i didn't do it consciously it was just a case of like just making whatever was fun and uh and yeah not really listening to other people at the time like not listening to uh, artists within the genre at the time um so yeah you're gonna hear this track here and it's like it's, it's break beats, it's melodic breaks, but it's also like, I don't know, a little bit different and, and weird. So yeah, let's have a little listen. And then if I can, I'll just go over some of the things that are in here and, and what's, what's working and all that stuff. So yeah, let's go from here. Thank you. 
think that's enough. Uh, I don't want to play too much. I'm probably going to get in trouble for doing <laughs> for showing this anyway. Um, <coughs> but yeah, I will go over like more things into production now rather than like I don't know my mindset in, in production. All right, so yeah, um, I guess the way that this project started um, is I just got Playbox, uh, which is through Native Instruments which I can maybe show you if it's still open somewhere, but I think I might have turned everything to audio. <coughs> Let's see, chords, maybe this. No, these are strings. Okay, I'll open it up. Uh, I'm not gonna give a tutorial on what Playbox is, but uh, yeah, you can go check it out in your own time. But it's like a sampler in a way. It's a bit like arcade, but it's it's better than that. <laughs> it's uh, it's like you just multiple samples that you can then play into chords. So you could have like a synth, a real instrument, a vocal, and some noise thing, all playing a single chord. Um, and that way you can just get these really weird, interesting textures. It's like really genius. Uh, so yeah, let's load up complete. And yeah, so this track is like 90% play box because I just got it and it was the first thing that I made with it. Uh, so let's just load this. <coughs> uh, yeah, so these are like loads of samples. These boxes represent samples. And so then like if I play a, a note, you might not be able to see it's quite light, but there's like a, a highlight around each of the boxes. But yeah, it's an amazing uh, plugin. I would highly recommend that you get it. I kind of want some of you to not get it because it will mean that you'll have the similar sound to me. But uh, yeah, it's uh, out there. Go get it. It's quite pricey, but uh, nothing too much. Anyway, the track started from me making these these textures. So uh, just finding like cool sounds in Playbox and then kind of like making a section out of it. So making like a phrase out of it. So I'll just try and find a point where it's like at the full phrase, I guess. Maybe here? Let's see. No, this is not, uh, maybe like here. Just really weird sounds, just like, what the hell is that? And that's what I wanted. I just wanted something that, like, people are going to go, what, how have you even made that? I mean, I mostly didn't really make it. I did a little bit of modulation in Playbox and stuff, but it's just, it'll be just some, like, simple sound with loads of distortion and delay and, uh, and things like that. And, uh, yeah, there's also the same with the vocal that's in this track and, like, the lead. So the lead here is in Playbox. But I did play this in myself, so I got the sound from Playbox and I like, just played this, the note and then rec recorded it into audio and then put it into sampler and then played the melody that I wanted because it's not so easy to do in Playbox. It just plays like chords. Uh, so yeah, I did that and I like, got the, like, the lead melody from there and then layered it with something underneath. Um, and that's kind of how this whole thing started. And then with this additional vocal as well, which is just like uh, little chops. Really weird. And this one here. All from Playbox. Um, and it's just maybe manipulated a little bit, but like you see like the crystallizer here and I uh, would have chopped it and put it into a certain certain timing so it fit with the everything else in the track. Um, and all the other stuff, I uh, did some stuff with the Korg, which you can see here. So I made this pad. Yeah, really nice. Uh, what does it do here? <laughs> Just went a bit crazy with the LFO at the end. Uh, this distortion one as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm sorry I can't show you um, the, the process of these things being made because I just have to turn them all into audio. Otherwise, uh, my CPU just goes crazy. And uh, I like doing that anyway myself, like when I'm producing, just so it's like I've committed to a sound and then I can't like move it around and change it loads. It's just like, all right, this is a good sound. Just commit to it. And so that's what I do a lot of the time. Uh, but yeah, this would have just been like this pad going through the devil lock uh, distortion in, through sound toys. And just like yeah, moving it around and modulating it and stuff like that as it's playing through. Um, so yeah, that's this is kind of like how all this started. It all started from like melodies and things like that. And then I just was like, all right, I need some break beats in here, and I got a break beat loop from Splice. Um, did I get a break beat loop? Yeah, this one. So that's like the main loop that plays through like the whole track pretty much. And then I like layer the the break beat with normal drums as well. This is what I do all the time with break beats, and uh, I'll get like these kind of ghost hits in between. I really like to exaggerate them. So all together uh, with the drums. Uh, well, I'll show you these other things before I show you all together. But uh, yeah, we have these like textures here. Whatever this this is. That was from Playbox as well. Just some weird noise thing, and I kind of timed it so it landed like a hat. And then we've got this clap that I use all the time. Just a nice human clap, which is taken from Mario Bruce State, uh, the Mario Bruce State pack. Uh, that's mostly like the Eric Harland kit. So this whole live drum kit is the Eric Harland kit, um, which is, just gives it this really nice live feel. And then we've got all these drums here, which is a mix of like production music live and some Mario Bruce State stuff. So it's this perk layer. So a lot of like layering of different tones on top of each other. We have this here. So it's just an additional clap, but it's got this other weird thing going on with it. And it's just like a, a clap loop essentially. And then we got this, which yeah, I can't really remember how that was made. Uh, I think it may have been some play box thing again, going through a vocoder. So it's just adding like a little bit of a small, more white noise essentially. One thing you're gonna notice like with most of my channels is I don't do a lot of processing. I do EQ and sidechain compression, and then I do group processing on the whole thing. So. I don't really like doing, well, I mean, not that I don't like doing, but I like to just control everything as a whole together rather than uh, an individual thing. I think I, I used to just get too caught up with things like that, spend, spending ages just like, oh, yeah, the snare's not quite there. But then if you layer it with something else, it's like all those decisions you've made kind of go out the window because, you you know, you've added it to something else and it's turned into this other sound. Um, so I like to lead things as, like, as, as raw as they are, to be honest, and then... Uh, just layer them and like turn them down and EQ them, do a bit of like multi-band compression and stuff like that. So I can compress them as a whole group rather than uh, individually. And so yeah, this is kind of like my whole drum processing that I do. If you watch any of my videos, you would have seen this uh, processing before. So like a PsyQ here, which is just like an EQ unit, like an analog EQing unit. So I could just EQ in certain areas to give a bit of, uh, see I've got a bit of a boost in the high end here. And then we've got a bit of compression on the overall group, quite light compression, I think. Oxford Inflator is just a saturation unit, a really, really good saturation unit. I would highly recommend getting this. Just adds a lot of color and uh, just like added perceived volume, I guess. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Just a Gulfoss as well, so a little bit of EQ, which is just taming some harsh frequencies. So we'll just look at the whole drum group. I'll take off the processing. Put it back on. So it's a lot brighter. Like I, I really like to exaggerate the, the high end quite a lot in the drums because I think it makes the track have a lot of energy. Um, and so that's something that I concentrate a lot on in, in my mixing. Um, yeah, so it will take me ages to go over everything individually in the in the in the um, in the track. I mean, I have mostly covered it, but going into detail of how what I've done there and here and there. Um, so I'll, maybe I'll cover that in another video. Maybe Indiana Deep will ask me to do it in some kind of live stream. 
But uh, yeah, I hope this was all helpful for you guys. One thing I just want to mention before I go is just with things like mastering. Um, so the mastering I do myself, so this was mastered myself and then I sent it to Injunadeep. They've then approved it and they'll probably master it themselves properly before it gets released. And this has happened with every release I've done up until this date, pretty much. I think maybe two or three have just been my release. Um, so I wouldn't worry that much about mastering so much. Like I, I've dived into it a, a fair bit, like learn about it a little bit. Uh, but it's just making sure that you can get your tracks to like a good volume. So I'm, I think I was probably hitting, well, let's have a look what, what volume I'm hitting at. Yeah, so I'm, I'm re this is actually pretty quiet compared to a lot of my other um, masters. But this is sitting at like minus 10 LUFs, which is all good. So there's like a nice bit of headroom there. Nothing's clipping, but normally I think I do push it. Yeah, I'll probably try and hit around minus eight, minus seven, something like that. But this kind of stuff, just like, don't worry about it that much. Just try and get your track so it's like at least hitting, I say minimum, like minus 12 LUFs. Um, and then just make sure that everything's clear. There's no resonant frequencies. So that's why I've got like Gulfoss, just get rid of anything that's sharp. Bit of saturation is always going to sound nice to, to add some additional harmonics and some perceived volume so it feels louder than it actually is and that's the kind of stuff that you need to do and just just making sure that the track is mono compatible um, which is something that you do in the mixing process but what i'm trying to get to is just you don't need to be paying people a lot of money for for mastering when it's just going to get mastered anyway by the label uh, later on you need to concentrate more on your mixing and your um your creation like your, you know the, the creation process so yeah this is a long video i apologize for that this is something i do quite a lot on out of the loop just make these long videos uh sorry if it's bored some of you you probably haven't been continued to watch the video if it bored you but uh yeah i hope it was insightful if there's something that you want me to cover like a certain subject in music like uh becoming self-employed in music or uh, yeah, mixing, mastering, um, or just like creating something. Just let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you enjoyed the video. Um, and yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching this one. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.